Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me on this video. Now today I want to show you a top that I've made in the last few days. I am super in love with it and um, this is Simplicity 1653. Um, I will insert better pictures here because you can't really see them good but this is um, an, an amazing fit it says here. Pattern, uh, it's a mock wrap. And this was sent to me from England by um, a lady on Instagram called Emma and Her Machine all together. I will link her down below as part of um, uh, the great big pattern swap. So I was super happy to get this and um, I wanted, I had a specific fabric in mind. I only had a meter. So um, I decided to make the view B, but a top, not a dress. Uh, the reason being is that um, <laughs> I go from extremes, so basically I have cami tops and sleeveless or I have long sleeve stuff, a few. Um, things with like normal sleeves, I have very few. And in this in-between weather, I think I would get much more wear out of a, a, a top, a wrap top with short sleeves than a dress. Um, I decided to make the raglan sleeves, just the normal ones, short. There's also like a flared option there too. This pattern has cup sizes and it says here it's got B, C, D and then for the curvy, um, double D. So you can choose your cup size. I always choose the C cup, um, that is what my cup is. And um, the interesting thing about this pattern is that it has two different bodices like on the back. There's um, a slim, a regular and a curvy. Now. Um, <laughs> I'm going to pop a picture here of the envelope. It really threw me off because the line drawings on the back of the envelope of the back, you know, have the darts uh, like drawn wrong. So for the slim and the regular, they have two darts, like four darts at the back. And then for the curvy, they just have one dart on each side. And I know that is wrong <laughs> because when you're curvy, uh, you usually have uh, more to adjust at the back, hence more, more darts, sway back, all sorts of things. Um, it really threw me off <laughs> when I was uh, like trying to find what I wanted. I wanted the regular, um, the regular fit, um, which would just have one dart on each side at the back. Now, looking at the pattern pieces, I confirmed that the, that the line drawings were wrong. Um, the curvy is the one that has the four darts at the back, and the slim and the regular have just one dart at the back. So something in the printing went wrong <laughs> on the envelope, and it's even like that on the website. Anyway. Just be aware, <laughs> if you want to make the curvy, make sure your your back has the four darts. Anyway, it is well written on the pattern, on the tissue, it's just that on the envelope it's wrong. Now let's talk about sizing. You know, everyone knows that these patterns have amounts of ease that, you know. So finished garment measurements are super important. Now if I take my body measurements and put, put it on one of these charts at the back, I would end up being a 20W. For you know, a little, between an 18 and a 20, um, because my measurements are in between there. Um, I looked at the finished garment measurements, and basically, this pattern has no ease, so it has no negative ease, it has no positive ease. So, <laughs> if your bust has a measurement on the body chart on the finished garment measurements, it will also have the same measurement. So I decided to size down. I am I was gonna work with an ITY that is quite stretchy. Whenever I've made uh, knit tops that have no ease, I find them like baggy and yeah. So yeah, I decided to go down to a 16 that has a finished bust of 38 and something, which would make me have like two and a half to three inches of negative ease on the top part of me. I thought that was totally acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> for a neat top. So it's basically I'm a 16 all here and then from here down I'm an 18 and that is so that my hips uh, are not like skin tight, you know? <laughs> so um, that is uh, a choice I made before even like looking at the pattern, just by looking at the, at the charts and everything. So now I have a, a video of uh, a mix of stuff, mix of interesting things, please <laughs> watch it. I'm sure you'll get lots of um, tips out of it, so that's coming in now. I always start by confirming the waist height of the pattern. You can see there that the pattern has a mark there for the waistline and it's at 42 and a half centimeters. Mine is at 44. 
That means I need to add about half an inch onto this bodice. So I do that on the cut line of the pattern, add that on because I want the waistline to be at the correct height. Now those dots are placed wrong and I have to fix that later. This is the back, the back of the dress. Now I decided to make a top, that's why it's quite shorter there. It's not full length. Now um, I chose the regular, the regular pattern. There is a slim fit and a curvy. The curvy has two dots. This one just has one back dot. As you can see, I did measure from up there down i noted that i had to add on half an inch to the length of my bodice so that is my waist now i've marked it there and the original darts here were up higher so the widest part of the dart was like an inch higher now i don't like that i like the widest part of the dart to be right at the height of my waist so i just move those darts down by sliding the paper basically from there i measured about 20 centimeters plus an inch for hem allowance because that is what i'm going to use consistently throughout this pattern for needs i like at least an inch for the hem now this particular pattern has three eighths of an inch around the neckline around the arms these are raglan sleeves but on the side seams it gives you an inch so because it's different everywhere, I've actually written, written on every single seam what the seam allowance is. The other thing, I blended in between 16. So neckline, arm, side is 16, and then here is an 18. And that's just a starting point. I'm going to adjust that once I fit it on myself. This is the left front. This is the bodice that goes behind the right one. So this one goes yeah so basically to this one this bodice will go attached to the skirt underneath because i added on a centimeter there i added on a centimeter there as you can see and i wrote it added one centimeter or three eighths to the bodice i did that the left front bodice has a side bust dart the depth of this dart looks correct about four centimeters um, now where the dart is pointing upwards i'm doubting but there's no way I can measure that right now because it's a raglan sleeve and I don't, I don't have a really good point of reference to measure from. So I'm gonna just go ahead and make it and then I know I can move that tip down if I need to when I try it on myself. And the depth is fine because this is a C cup. And I've marked all the different seam allowances everywhere as well. This is the skirt front that goes on the fold. Um, you can see it's shorter. That is the waistline, so I've measured the same amount that I did from there so that they match. And now the right front has all those little pleats that cross over and make it look like a wrap dress, but it's not. So you can see there it has three pleats, one, two, three. They scrunch up, they tie to a, to a tie. And here, this is just like loose on top of the dress. And they gave you just five eighths of an inch for hem allowance, but on knits I like to have an inch of hem allowance. So five eighths plus three eighths that I added on, you can see there gives me a one inch hem allowance that I like. The other pieces I have here are the two sleeves. Um, it comes with a front and a back sleeve. So you can see it's gonna give really good shaping to the shoulder because it's got that dart, you know? So sleeve front sleeve back i've also combined my sizes 16 up here 16 16 but here is 18. also i've sh i've chosen the short sleeve version they originally give you a 5 8 for the hem i added on a 3 8 there as you can see for a one inch hem allowance which now this is a tie thing that you cut twice one goes there and the other one goes on the side seam. Now this uh, fabric that I have is super different. I only had one meter and the print placement is very strange. So I played loads with the pattern pieces to get them one to fit and to look decent. So that took me a long time. Now those two uh, things that were supposed to be for wrapping it, they don't fit. They had a pattern piece for facings or bands to finish the neckline and they have a left and a right side because they are asymmetric they are different um, i wasn't going to cut that out i always just do bands um, 
separately and use the measurements that give us our reference point. So the right is 60 and the left is 65 centimeters by an inch. This is the garment semi-constructed. All the main seams have been stitched up except for the side seams, the ties that go there and the hems and of course the hems of the sleeves. So every single seam that I've sewn has a one centimeter seam allowance and they left for the side seams here one inch. So I'm not gonna go ahead and just sew that. I'm going to pin all this try it on and adjust um this is the right side that wraps over and it's a different pattern piece than the left that's tucked under there and here there are a number of pleats um i have already overlocked and pressed up the seam for this piece because i'm going to have to hem that and have it ready before i go in and attach it to the side seams so here you see all the pleats there are um, three pleats, one, two, three, and they all are meant to be pressed down. You can see that is nice and, and um, even all that. Um, now, I lengthened my hem allowance 20 inch because that's what I like to do with knits. So when I fold this an inch up, it sort of catches all this bulk here and it's really annoying. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna mark with a pin from about there and I'm gonna go and chop off all that bulk, as much bulk as I can. I'm gonna chop it off, and that sort of weird cut thing that I'm gonna have there is gonna be hidden under the hem, and that will make less bulk there, because just like that, it does not look nice. You can't see here, but the left bodice there is attached to the skirt. Now, if this was a dress, this would be long, but I opted to just make a top, so from the skirt down to there, I've measured a little over 20 centimeters, but I've yet to try it on and determine the final length that it's going to have. So there is a seam there that goes all the way across. Um, I'm going to open this up. Here are the darts at the back. Now you can't really see them, but they're there. Fisheye darts, quite long, down to there. And all this that you can see open like this are the raglan sleeves. Now these raglan sleeves are two-pieced. So this is the front part of the sleeve, that's the back. There's a seam there that gives it the nice shaping. So that's all done on both sides. You can see I've chopped off what I was gonna say, where the pins are is where the actual hem is gonna lie. There you can see, and I've reduced the bulk there on that side, I didn't like. For the facings or bands, I ended up cutting them two centimeters shorter than the recommended amount that was on the pattern. Uh, by an inch wide, I folded that and sewed that all the way around the neckline. Um, the raglan sleeves are on, everything's on, and I just sewed it all the way around with a really, really little seam allowance, one eighth of an inch. Then I'm gonna take that, fold that under. You can see that's the right side of my bodice that you're seeing, that under there. And then I'm gonna stitch that down to the neckline. So I'm going to use my quarter inch foot to do that. Uh, here you can see me sewing. I'm not using pins. I'm just folding it under as I go and it's going to be nice and straight and it's going to look nice. So my top is looking less like a blob. Um, I have hemmed that front bit that I showed you that's already hemmed but you can't see it because it's inside. Then I finished the binding all around the neckline. Um, I've already shown you how to how I did that now. I just made it up on the go. I Don't have the instructions for this pattern. I really don't know how it was supposed to be done But it turned out nice um, So now I've pinned The side seams here with the one inch seam allowance and now this side here um, You have the front right side the one that flaps over sandwiched in between this side. So basically, the left piece for the front reaches all the way over to the other side seam, so it's fully closed here. And then comes a part of the skirt, or in my case, piece a little piece, because I'm making a top. And now the side that wraps over is also caught in that side seam. But here, I need to attach a strap like a little long thingy, a tie. Um, and I need to make the other one inside that side seam as well. 
So I'm going to go ahead and try these to see if the side seams are matching, how it's fitting. Uh, I'm then going to sew up the straps, attach one over here, enclose the other one inside at the waist level and then I can sew the side seams. So I've got the, the pins on the side with the one uh, inch seam allowance and I think it's fine. Um, the waist is hitting me exactly as it should, so the correction I made was right on. The darts are hitting right at the small of my back, right at the height they need to be. So I want to show you a close-up of that dart there at the side. Look at that. This is my apex. So yeah, <laughs> that tip of that dart needs to come down an inch. I am going to keep the same depth it has there. I'm going to unstitch it, but I'm just going to redirect it over here. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to fix that because that looks ridiculous. Look at that apex pointing to the sky. <laughs> here you can see my original dart shape there. Now you can see the tip there is too high for me, so I'm just lowering it down an inch. So I'm just going to draw a line from there, from that same edge at the bottom of the dart to that point there and now keeping the same width when you look at the top part of the dart I'm just going to basically change the inclination of the dart so it's not going to be those darts that are pointing up so that's my new dart if I wanted to keep that pointy up thing I would have to change the whole thing and lower it down to here and then have that tip reach there but I don't really care to do that the effect will be the same now when you close the start and you put that down, you can see there's some discrepancy there. So from that, from that edge there, you can see that dangly bit there. I'm going to make a line tapering off to nothing at the top there. See, and I'm going to trim that off. And now that will be my new shape. I've placed my pattern piece on top of the fabric, matching up all the sides so that it's exactly on top of there. And um, I've put my tracing paper underneath there, so I'm going to mark my new dart. I've already unstitched and picked that wrong dart. So all my fabric is extended underneath that um, pattern piece paper and the tracing paper. So as I remove this, um, you're going to see still the marks of the old dart, you can see there, but now there's a faint yellow line there that I can see. Close up that dart, then I can finish the side seams, the hems, the ties, and I am done. So here is my gorgeous top. I love this top. You don't even have to ask me how much I love it. And I love the print, the colors. Um, it took me very, very long to put the patterns, like the, the pattern pieces on one, one meter of fabric. <laughs> yeah, it just, yeah. So um, the left bodice and the right bodice is cut separately and the back is, um, actually the back has a seam there. It's supposed to have um, a seam there, but I, no. <laughs> I eliminated that seam and I just put my fabric on the fold and I have my two dots there. You saw how quickly I was able to uh, manipulate where those darts were and just adjust the back. I, if I hadn't have done that, I would have a really wonky back fit and I don't like that. <laughs> so I always talk about that I know my measurements. If you haven't taken your measurements in detail, I am going to uh, link you to one of the first videos ever on my channel and, and um, there is one where I'm drafting my own bodice block where I measured myself in detail and yeah, bear with me. <laughs> I am super embarrassed to send you there but the information can be super useful. You can see how I measured myself and why I know my height on the front, why I know my height on the back, why I know my apex to apex, yeah, everything. If you know that about yourself, it's so much easier to adjust your patterns before you make like a muslin or try to make a test, you know, garment. So knowing that and having that in my head 
is super practical for um, just flat measuring and see what you can do before sewing. So that worked. <laughs> you saw when I tried it on myself that that was hitting right, well, right where it had to. You saw this ridiculous side bust that there <laughs> that now fits perfect. Now, um, the bands. There, there is some bands here because it's it's a wrap, you know. Um, I didn't have enough fabric to cut those two pieces, so I cut I cut them out of a rayon spandex black that I have in my stash. Just one inch strips, you know. It tells you I measured the pattern pieces. I didn't trace them. I don't have pattern pieces for that. I just wrote them down on my patterns, um, and you know it gave you a, a guide. I don't usually consider the measurements that they give you because they don't know what type of knit you're working with and um, I ended up making my bands slightly smaller to get the tension that I need here. Had I left them as, as is, I probably would have had like a gaping neckline and stuff. So it's all by feel. I can't really tell you a percentage. It's just the way you feel and the way you go stretching it as you sew that tells you, yeah, that's the right amount, you know? Um, so that was quite easy to do, just sew all the way around and then um, top stitch it down on the top with my quarter inch foot that I am using so much. So, so practical. Now, about the ties. <laughs> These ties. Um, the ties were huge. Uh, I'm going to put, put some pictures in here to show you how much I trimmed off because they were just so wide. Um, yeah. I kept the length of the ties the same, but I made them narrower. So basically my ties are like five centimeters wide now. And I didn't have enough fabric, I had shreds left. So yeah, my ties are pieced together. Um, this is one piece here <laughs> on the tips where you see color, that's another piece. Um, yeah, I had to piece like three, three pieces of fabric to get my length of the ties. But that's fine, no one's gonna know, you can't tell, it's all tied up in a bow. And I just think the proportions were a bit off if you look at the line drawings. And on some pattern reviews I read, everyone said that the ties were huge and bulky and heavy and I didn't want that. So you can see that the left goes there, the right crisscrosses over here and wraps around there. I absolutely love this. magically have it on after you saw the photos um, I love it I just can't say I can't, just words cannot describe it's just perfect usually with wrap things sometimes I have like yeah exploding bosoms and no <laughs> this is super super nice for me quite modest but deep at the same time you can't see a single thing when I go sideways, there's no gaping, there's just no, no chance anyone's going to see what they don't have to. The two-piece raglan sleeve is brilliant, I absolutely love it. Uh, it fits way better than a normal raglan sleeve would, you know, because it's got all the shape really nicely and then you don't have a sleeve that like sticks out. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, that's as far as I can go unless I want to fall down the balcony. <laughs> Uh, see the tips of these of these ties. I purposely put some print there so that they would have a detail there against the black uh, I'm wearing black pants, but the top is up to here just just up to my hip and I have a lot of print at the back there as well Nice and fitted nice and shaped. I feel really good when I wear it. I already worn it I put a picture on Instagram the other day that my son snapped of us in the university um, very nice top and I'm super, super happy I made it. I recommend this pattern a billion, a billion percent because you can choose what you want to make it fit you according to your, your physique, you know, if you're very slim, if you're curvy, you know, you can just choose and it's going to fit amazing because it says there it's amazing fit and it does fit amazing. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you give this pattern a go. I absolutely loved it. Bye, happy sewing.